You got a one, a two, and a three. Hey now, metal mic coming at you. I got a great live. It is Saturday. The baby's down for the nap right now. The other two kids are in the house as well. So what am I doing? I'm doing exactly what I said I was going to do. We're listing things on eBay. We're moving some of the inventory out. And here is a great piece that I think you have to see. I picked this up in St. Paul. This actually was a lot of legwork. I had uh, admired this really old house right off of uh, 94 in St. Paul. And 94 runs through an old neighborhood called the Rondo neighborhood, which was an all-black uh, neighborhood in St. Paul in the 1920s, 1930s. I had always admired this old house. It was so old, it had the old uh, curtains, etc. So every time I would drive by, I would just be drooling. One day, I just put my hard hat on, took the flyer up to the door, knocked on the door, and a man opened the door, an old black man. Next thing you know, I'm at the kitchen table, I'm bullshitting with him, I'm buying stuff in the basement, and he had told me that he had some old saxophones up in the attic. Well, hell, I had gone back one other time after that and bought some old, uh, gosh, what was it, uh, ham radios, etc., from, from the wife. Then they gave me a call. It's been about, I guess, 10 years since that initial uh, introduction when I met him. He had passed away. The wife was selling the house. I ended up getting those saxophones that were in the attic. This is the first one. This one's going on eBay today. I just got done taking the pictures of it. As I unwrapped it, there's just all kinds of little trinkets in here in history. So let's get a videotape for you guys there on YouTube to check out. First off, we got the sax in the case. Beautiful condition. Everything seems to be all right. There doesn't seem to be any damage uh, of water that got in here. Maybe a little bit right here. But overall, these things are all moving very freely. It's marked on the front. The King Zephyr. And then it has a model number on the rear. Now I believe this to be early 1900s. This guy was a jazz musician. So I definitely, obviously that's what it was used for. Now inside this case right here, when I opened this up, of course this was all his, uh, his gear that he had wrapped up. He has all these reeds, uh, Rico reeds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They were in this uh, box right here, seven reeds another piece of the saxophone. He had these pieces, this piece to the saxophone was inside of this bag, wrapped inside of this, and then wrapped inside of this, entombed. When he wrapped this up the last time, he made sure that everything was gonna be safe. This piece right here was so intricately wrapped in uh, one, two, three, four, and then another baby's t-shirt, it was unreal. So all these pieces, a couple of, uh, what the hell are these called, I forget. Those were in there as well. We got the sacks in there, and then this is really kind of cool. This was like the cherry on top. Really great piece. This is a, a, a handbill, a flyer, and it's actually dated. It's got a date of Easter 1938 on it. And this could have been a dance that he played at, or even that uh, maybe he just went there and seen somebody. But it's great. It's got Buck Starry in his Ramblers. Now I'll do a little research. And if that's a great old jazz band from back in the 1930s, that's going to just add to this collection. So, this is going on eBay today. As you can see, I'm thrilled. I got the pictures taken. Now, really what it's going to come down to is fine details, making sure I list every single piece that's in here, how many reeds are there, how I found it, giving the history on this. The case is pretty beat to hell, but that doesn't matter at this point. Metal Mike coming at ya. Let's get to work. Hey now. 